I didn't hear it. How did they hear it? Because of the mic. It's Everything is mic. okay. So like the, the crow she was hearing times seven. But the crow is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It's not? No. The you don't want natural music the in the background. Exactly. <laughs> the people want to know we are in a ranch. <laughs> right? A large ranch. Yes. <laughs> An elephant may just walk by. Yeah. So, please. We might just go and feed our tiger now. <laughs> yeah. Things can happen. Wow. Okay. Hi, Shifa. Oh my God, Martha. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. This is really great. This is lovely. It, it mm -hmm. should have happened a long time ago, but I here know. we are. Yeah. You look really lovely. You too. Oh my God. Uh, le now, let's see what we have here. Yes. What have been the critiques from members of the public that have been able to help you grow in your thinking, your reflections, uh -huh. and your practice as political actors? <sighs> wow. Um, <laughs> I... I think there are two two different types of critiques. There have been the very good ones, and the good ones are the ones that move you to the right direction. And there have also been the very terrible ones, right? Um, and the terrible ones, sadly, have come from gatekeepers in the space, you know? And, and I have to say this as someone who adores you very deeply, um, um, thinks you're a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful space holder for young women in this space. Mm that you're one of the people who pushed me forward, right? And even when we met, you've always been like, what are you doing for young women? You need to move forward and do this. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's great. Mm -hmm. But then the, the other female gatekeepers have felt um, threatened by my existence because I'm very bold, I'm very large, I occupy a very big space, I'm deeply unapologetic. You know that I love chaos. Um, <laughs> Um, and that you know that I always love to leave a space where people are feeling like they need to think better, be better, right? Um, so the, the female gatekeepers in the space have always wanted to not necessarily bring me down, but completely obliterate me and use my sexuality as a thing, right? Um, and I remember a particular incident where one woman did a whole campaign, quote unquote, where she was going and telling the donors, because I work also in the development space, so I am multi-faceted um, in, in, my, in my career. And she was going around telling people how, oh my God, Schaefer is promiscuous and Schaefer is not to be trusted to lead the young women. And she, so it was basically the patriarchal way of bringing a woman down and using her sexuality and using um, who she sleeps with, who she doesn't sleep with as a way to bring me down, which I was just like, this is bullshit um, in, in, in that regard. The good critiques have been people who want me to now engage on a grassroots level. Because I've also realized my politics becomes very elite, you know, because I speak in English. I speak in English all the time um, and I cater to a, a specific demographic. But knowing that there's a thirst and there's a hunger for my kind of consciousness and engagement for a larger demographic has been really, really wonderful. And then, of course, people like you are always telling me, what are you doing beyond <laughs> just being angry? Mm -hmm. You know, because also the thing about it is that anger kind of like ignites the fire but doesn't mm -hmm. sustain it you know because it's easily consuming so those have been my critiques i don't know what about yours i think for me um any criticism regarding issues mm. i internalize and i try to see how best to improve yeah but any criticism that comes to me on basis of my gender mm. my antennas are always out yep if it is you are attacking me on basis of gender, if you want to remold me, and I'll be able to tell you very quickly mm. that I came finished, mm. God did his work. I love it. You know, because there's this thing telling, you know, both men and women may tell you, a woman is expected to do this. Yes. I don't want to be told what a woman is expected to do. Mm -hmm is what any person in that space, what is expected of them. Mm. So anything sexist doesn't reside in me. Mm. It will fall off yeah. where it was thrown. But any criticism based on the issues that can improve me, mm. I think we are not impervious to criticism. Mm. When I go to sleep, mm some of those ideas come back yeah. and we are able to grow. Mm. I remember that uh, when we started activism, 
on women issues. There are people who told us that uh, we got to change the tone, mm. not to sound like it's a fight between women and men. That did help us grow. Yeah. And we started casting it as a partnership yeah. of the genders. We started even inviting at least one third men mm. into the women conversation, especially after Beijing. Yeah. And uh, it helped because the society gets to understand you. Um, you are understood as trying to bring in something mm. that is good for the society. Mm. And that idea that it's a fight between women and men would go. Mm. Criticism about that as a woman, you should not be talking so loudly. Yes. You should be, you know, mellow. Yes. That one I will not take. Dress a certain because, way. Yes. Look a certain way. Yes. I want to be me. I agree. And I want to be unapologetically me. Yeah. And yes, we all grow. Mm. And if you fail to grow, and I don't know anybody who doesn't grow, mm. then you're not listening. Yeah. We do listen. Mm. Yeah. Particularly the people who don't even understand yeah. the ways in which women exist and occupy public space. Yeah. And that we are not going to show up. And we shouldn't show up the way men show up. Even the way yeah. we dress, the way we talk. So if your voices are a little frail and high octane, you'll be told, oh, speak a little lower. You're shouting so the men can't hear you. You know, people won't respond <laughs> because your voice is so sharp. Yeah. If your voice is deeper, why are you sounding like the men? Then it's a problem. Yeah. You know? And I remember when I got into the space, my idea was, how do I change the perception of how we see young women in politics? So I wore all sorts of hairstyles, right? Yeah. I wore head wrap, I wore very long blades, I had my hair in an afro, and the comments were like, yeah, we like what she's saying. Mm. Tell her to comb her hair. <laughs> <laughs> like, as if your hair has all the, all, yeah. all, all the knowledge. Anyway. No, uh, but before, before we go to that, there's yes. one thing I would like to say about women criticizing women. Yes. We seem to be more hurt we respond more mm -hmm. to criticism by fellow women. Mm. But I have learned now to internalize and say, remember, both women and men are brought up in patriarchy. True. So the woman criticizing you and sounding like the male do when criticizing yeah. women, it is not because she wants to hurt you more. Mm. We just got to recognize that women and, and men are products of patriarchy. Yes. And until a woman becomes conscious mm, and, unlearns. and starts to unlearn the patriarchy in them, yeah. they will sound just like, like the, the men. men. I know. And I have learned to respond differently. Mm. That to just continue with what I'm doing mm. and to engage on a different platform mm. with those criticizing me. Mm. Because it's not about your um social behavior mm. because men are never held to account Absolutely. on who is their friends yeah but we look for scandal where women are yes i think we just have to keep on reaffirming ourselves yeah and not allowing ourselves to engage in battles that are not worthy i agree i will avoid I agree. company that gives me negative energy mm. and i will look for company that gives me positive energy yes. like this. I love it. Yes. I love it. So this is an interesting one. Mm -hmm. um, a very common political reality is that people lose when they run for office. There can only be one winner. As you know, winner takes all, right? Mm -hmm. When women candidates do not succeed in their run, how can the public best continue to support them? I think that's uh, easy. There's no difference when a man loses True. and when a woman loses. Yep. And to be supported, you have to put yourself out there, mm. just like you did when you campaigned. Mm. You may not have found the office, yeah. but your public space never goes. Yes. So you've got to continue occupying yes. that public space. Yes. I lost when I, la uh, I ran for president in mm. 2013. Mm -hmm. It didn't take away my public space. Mm. I was still around the scene doing what I thought I should do best. I will not say I lost in 2017. Mm. I say my victory was stolen. Yes. But the total result is that I'm not in office. Mm. But I'm occupying my space as a Kenyan, yeah. as a leader, mm. as a woman. Mm. So it is very important for candidates not to agree to be erased 
from the public space yeah. or to disappear because you can make yourself disappear yeah. from the public space. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be the national space. Mm. You could have been running in a ward. How about remaining in the public space in that, at that level, mm. at whatever level, mm. make yourself visible mm. and continue doing. If you're public spirited, there's more to do than just serving in an office. I agree. Don't agree to be erased or to disappear. I agree. Yes. I agree completely. And yes. I think I think a lot more people need to just like it's 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 like a collective unlearning of, mm -hmm. of seeing politics as a winner takes all. Because I think when you run for an office, when you stand for particular ideology, it doesn't yeah. go away because you don't get the actual office, sure. you know? Mm -hmm. You're still a human rights person. You're yeah. still this person who, f who finds that justice is something that should be inclusive. You're still mm -hmm. someone who finds that, you know, we need to have pro-poor politics. Mm -hmm. We need to center people in your politics. I don't think that goes away, but I guess the way in which the male gender has bastardized politics <laughs> yeah. is where mm -hmm. if you win as a man, yeah. then the other man has lost. And the only way the other man can get into negotiations with you is figuring out how do we divide this thing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is such a defeatist mentality. I think there's a mentality shift we need to have there. Yeah. Because I've even seen it with the younger candidates, so someone like Samantha Miner who ran for Kilalesha Award. Yeah. And the fact that she's been active, but yeah. in a different capacity. Yeah. You know, you're now not active as someone who's vying, but you're active as someone who's engaged. As someone who also people voted for yeah because the idea is there are people who believe in the ideology the people who still believe in what you stand for the people who still want to see and hear what you think about mm -hmm. where we are moving right so i agree totally in figuring out how we get not just the participants who are yeah. now the voters quote unquote yeah. and that's a very loose way of putting it yeah. and that the, the people who want to lead them as the candidates into completing a cycle where we are all engaging despite us not getting the thing and yeah. also if you look at the history of Kenyan politics and knowing that it's been a long time coming where the systems have been completely run down, you know, and that fixing that, fixing the ideology, fixing how people are conditioned and how people see politics yeah. will take a while to change. So we are in it for the long run. So we are consistent. Mm -hmm. We win, we lose. We are still occupying We're space. We're still there, yes. Yeah, o expanding space, sharing space, holding space and bringing in new people. So, yeah. I love and even that. the best in the political class. Yeah can never tackle everything. Exactly. There's always something you can do mm. as a citizen, mm. as an engaged person. Yeah. So the message is, win or lose, stay engaged. Yeah. Stay with the people. Yeah. yeah. Actively, actively keep, yeah. Your, keep, keep your space and your voice engaged mm -hmm. for as long as it can be done. That's I it. love it. We're there. I think it's now you getting the next get an easy question <laughs> <laughs> i hope my fingers have gone for the i hope easier. so have the attitudes in kenya towards women in politics changed in any way during the period in which you have been politically active what have the changes been and how have they affected your political work oh my god you just you just didn't get an easy question <laughs> that's a three-part question yeah um, has kenyan's perspective changed towards women um how what what are the changes and then how do we keep yeah. hmm i think yes uh very much yes i would be i would be very stupid to say no yeah. Because me being here, yeah. um, first, and I exist in multiple identities as, mm -hmm. as an unmarried, now I'm just stepping out of youth because I turned 36 this year. So as an unmarried youthful, so because when yes. you turn 36, now you yeah, become yeah. youthful. <laughs> youthful, um, uh, career, uh, gender defying, absolutely, absolutely unapologetic woman, feminist, mm -hmm. you know. Um, a feminist woman in this space, I think it's not an event, first of all. So, so knowing that Kenyan's attitude changing towards women has been something that has happened because there were seeds planted by other women before mm -hmm. me, like long, long, long a time ago, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I hear pe people like Phoebe Asi, I'm like, hmm, what did she do? And because people will blindly ask, and stupidly so, yeah, yeah. assume that they were not doing anything. But like, I exist today because of women like that, you know, and women who took that mantle mm -hmm. because of women like you, who are just like, why is everyone not talking about women and the role women should play in this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So then people like me have mm -hmm. built yeah. our careers, our consciousness, our courage, our boldness, mm -hmm. and our audacity from all that lineage of women who've been fantastical and magical in the, in the political space. 
So has the attitude changed? Absolutely, yes. Um, there, there's more that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and that is because we need more of our generation, uh, particularly men, who don't see women as leaders of every gender, because mm -hmm. men see women as women's leaders. Mm -hmm. So Martha will be the leader of women. Mm -hmm. You know, so Martha will be called to talk about women issues, yeah, yeah. but she will not be called to talk about how politics now marries with policy and how this transcends into every, every gender, right? Mm -hmm. So our generation, that's their challenge, of figuring out how the young generation now and the, the generation that is going to inherit the country starts mm -hmm. seeing women differently and young women differently because Kenya is going younger, Kenya is yeah, not going yeah, older, yeah. Kenya is going very young, you know. So figuring out how that happens and that it becomes their role to figure that out. What are some of the changes? I think one is the ability for, and I think women have done this audaciously because it was not given to us, mm -hmm. occupying media spaces, mm -hmm. you know. From the place where you just say, listen, you cannot have men mm -hmm. talking about a country that is half women, women and yeah. majority women yeah. and pretend like the other gender doesn't exist just because you, ha you are here, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing is seeing that now a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of conversations is starting to see that there is no difference as regards morality. And that's, I put a pin on that. Um, when it comes to how men have run this country and women have run this country. And what that means is we are now starting to see that the misfortunes of men, their bad choices, all of that is because they chose to, mm -mm. you know. So that even when we look up to women, we are not mm -hmm. looking up to them because they are morally upright. Mm -hmm. They are religiously upright. Women will not do things that are against the law. But it means that women are now looked at as people and we are still pushing that narrative. Mm -hmm. So that someone like me, if I decided you and I are going to run this country, we are not looked at as, oh my God, two women? Yeah. What happens if they are pregnant? Or what happens if they fight? What mm -hmm. happens if this, ha right? So we are seen as human beings who can actually mm -hmm. do a thing without the constraints of conditioning, without the constraints of socialization. Um, I still insist that there's so much to be done. Mm -hmm. um, and I still insist um, in wanting and demanding, if I can demand, of yeah. more younger voices of audacious women mm -hmm. to come and occupy political space. I, I agree that a lot has changed, mm. but there are some things, the more they change, the more they same. remain the same. One, women are coming in large numbers, mm. coming out. Mm. So there's the presence of women mm. in all public spaces. Yeah. Thanks to the 2010 constitution yeah. and thanks also to the consciousness around the country yeah. that women have a place mm -hmm. and have a role to play in everything that goes on in society. Mm -hmm. So the leadership of women is becoming more and more accepted. Mm -hmm. But as it, as it becomes more accepted, there's a backlash, of course. especially from the young male mm. who feels threatened mm. by this much of women. Mm. And therefore, when I listen to issues being discussed in Parliament, you will hear totally unpalatable things being said by the young males. Oh, wow. It's as though they do not have mothers sisters is that so women belong to another planet mm. and it makes me think that um, we now need to start on working on gender relations right from the formative years from the home mm. in the school curricula in the media so that even those who steer these conversations do not allow negative mm. negativity mm. in the gender debate yeah we humanize. Yes. And when you think about how you relate to your brothers at home, how you relate to males with, you know, who are your relatives, yeah. who are your friends, yeah. you will realize that we are the same and we root for each other. Yeah. So if we normalize that debate, things will change forever. Agree. So, and to the women, it's our time. Mm. The future is female. It really is. Step out, take up your space. Yeah. And taking up our space doesn't mean marginalizing the men. It just means joining hand so that talent, which resides in both women and men, we utilize our full capacity mm. as a country mm. and then we can move forward. Mm. I have seen when women vie 
I will say more women are getting elected, but because parties are male dominated, most yes, of them, yes. not enough women are getting the chance to run yeah. for office. Yeah. We need to identify where the barriers are yes. to unlock them. Mm. But yes, there's been tremendous changes. I agree. The voices of women are there. I agree. And we must hold that space yeah. and occupy mm. the space that is proportional to our numbers. I agree. Yes. I agree. And something so interesting you've said, which is marginalizing <laughs> the male gender, which yes. I think is impossible. Yeah. And the reason why I think is impossible is yeah. because as long as patriarchy exists, yeah. a man a man who has zero clout apart from they were born with an extra organ yeah. will still be more powerful than a woman who went to Harvard because of the way society has been set up for them to succeed, right? Yeah. So then women who have to work twice as hard and now we have to work thrice as hard. And then on top of that, we have to work thrice as hard and be safe. I will tell because, you how they can be now it's, marginalized. Because now it's a problem. Yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and then you find that within that, within that engagement, yeah. the man will always, always, always feel like, but I am a man, I am the head. I'll tell the you idea. where they're getting marginalized. <laughs> yeah. If you look at professions, mm -hmm. professional courses, if you look at universities, increasingly you'll find women lecturers and professors increasing. Mm -hmm. You look at the doctors, mm -hmm. you look at the lawyers, mm -hmm. and if you look at the dropout rates, mm -hmm. men, are now dropping out in larger numbers. Mm -hmm. so, so to our, our male folk, the message is, this gender debate is not about women. The yeah. word gender doesn't Does mean women. women. Yeah. Yeah. If something is not done and we go at the rate we are going, mm. it is men who will require the affirmative action. Mm. And it may be within my lifetime, mm. maybe another 20 years. Mm. So what we are saying is that, yes, they can marginalize themselves, not we shall not have marginalized them. But if we don't take care of the boy child who now has no, you know, is lacking role models in the villages, mm. in the homes, if men do not take up their roles and responsibilities within the family, yes. the future, the male gender could be the marginalized gender. Yeah. And I say that as a mother mm. to a daughter and a son, mm. yes. So then men could marginalize men. Yeah which means they have to be responsible to ensuring that their marginalization doesn't happen. I think right? we do that together as society because at the end of the day, we are mothers, we are sisters. True. We are even grandmothers. Yeah. yeah so. But do they listen to us, Martha? <laughs> do they care to know? We what? will keep <laughs> saying it and it will be well. Anyway. Yes. yes. Interesting thoughts. Um, I'm still hoping to see men doing more than just existing as masculine bodies in society but yeah hmm what can you tell the public about being members of political parties that a significant number of us do not know already okay and what can you share to encourage women especially young women to join political parties in Kenya this is interesting it is interesting okay. and uh, I want I would want everyone to know that governments mm -hmm. are formed by political parties you can run as an independent candidate, yes. but you can't form government as an independent candidate. Yes. It is a corporate affair. So a party is a network mm. of people who share the same ideology, mm. who would want to manage a country, the affairs of the country in a specific way. Mm -hmm. So for you to participate as a citizen, in the management of your own affairs because mm -hmm. managements of a country are managements of your own affairs. Exactly. Your health services, your education services, exactly. your uh, environment, yes. security, etc. Yeah. You need to join a political party. I agree. And to remember that a government is as good as a political party that forms it. True. A chaotic party forms a chaotic government. Mm. So. If you join a political party, then you are able to shape policy. Yes. You are able to hold leaders to account yes. within the party. You are also able to get space, if not for yourself, mm. for other women and men yes. to run using that party. Yeah. A party is the most important medium of yeko mm. for governance yes. in the country. Yeah. And that is why it is 
a yes, yes to yes. joining a political party. And if you're not, then you're not taking your civic responsibility seriously. seriously. You ought to join a party of choice, mm. a party whose values and ideals you share. Yeah. And then your voice, you can aggregate your voices mm. to be able to share in the governance mm. of our country. I agree, yeah. I agree. And it, it takes me back to my journey of becoming now the vice chair of the party that I, I, I lead with my team. And it was such a long journey and I didn't know it was going to, head, to like head me there. Mm. And for the longest time I was upset about many things. Like mm. Kenya, you, <laughs> like you have, you just wake up in the morning yeah. and it's like, this is your list of anger. Pick the things you want to be angry about yeah. today, right? And it never ends. And I was constantly angry about particular things. I was constantly angry about the silencing. I was constantly angry about the blindness within which the government and the regime at that moment, at that time, wasn't seeing that people mm. are saying, this is the problem. Mm -hmm. This is our pressure points. This is where we need you to come in. This is what we need to do. And I remember uh, my friends coming and saying, wait, so, now that you're angry about these things, why don't you join an organized institution that yeah. can politically question power, mm. that can politically question power, mm. um, and then that can politically just give you a space okay. to be heard in the way you should be heard. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is in Kenya, because if you speak and if you're questioning and if you're a dissident, um, you're just like, you're a noisemaker. Yeah. Nobody cares about noisemakers. Mm -hmm. But then if you do it within a structure of a political institution, so it goes back to what you're saying, you now start having power to, to account mm -hmm. of what, is, what are they doing, this is what they should be doing. You can ask questions. Yeah. So even me joining a political party was a thing I never thought of. I was like, politics in Kenya, it's so dirty, <laughs> why should I? I'm just, you know? Yeah. But then I realized, no, at some point, we all have to play a higher political duty. Mm -hmm. And we all have to be part and parcel of these institutions. Because at the end of the day, we don't want briefcase parties. Mm -hmm. And then for them to not be briefcase, they need actual people who come and say, so this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. These are our priorities. People hold parties accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, party members hold parties accountable. So I think for me, it is, it is a, such like an action... Um, like I'm being an, an, an action hopeful person when I say I need younger women to join political parties, mm -hmm. not because of anything, but because of three things. Because one, they can harness their power mm -hmm. easier than doing it in the peripheries of politics and governance. Yeah. Yeah. And then number two, it gives them impetus and credibility and the audacity to say, we are questioning you because we, do, we are in this party and then we need X, Y, Z answers on how you even spent 10 billion now that the country spends a couple of billions every day right yeah. we can ask that within party structures mm. um and then number three for just inclusion representation and active polit participation in politics because there's a different way you engage politically when you're in a party than when you are in the periphery and i'm yeah. not saying periphery work doesn't count mm. i'm just saying it is taking periphery work to the next level so joining political parties is great because now you can even question wait this party has been doing this for xx years mm. why isn't it not seeing this as a priority or why is it not seeing this as an actual issue you know you can raise those within party structures mm. and i think this is the time particularly now that we have a majority young women republic to now start championing for the things they want for themselves within party structures you know so someone like me who will come and say I want menstrual dignity and I want to end menstrual poverty and if I'm doing it in the periphery that's fantastic that's mm. great you'll point and say oh look at her she's doing great you know yeah but then when I'm doing it as a political person who has political credibility, who has an actual space within politics, it's very different because now people have to listen. They can decide to ignore you, but they can't ignore you forever, yeah. you know, because everyone will start seeing, wait, that woman, that young lady has been consistent about this. Yeah. We need to start considering. So I agree. There's ways in which being in political parties allows us to stretch the muscle of political engagement. Yeah. Um, moves us from apathy because also we do apathy very well as mm -hmm. Kenyans and I, I truly understand why we do because there's so many things happening and you're also trying to survive yeah. but also it gives us it, it just gives us the the energy and the fuel we need to keep pushing forward because mm -hmm. you're now not doing it alone and that was the thing for me finding people who think like I do have the energy for doing the things that I wanted to do politically for the country and not feeling like now I'm just in my corner struggling and wondering who else will be angry like me tomorrow. So I think it, those three things are the reasons why I would want young women to join political parties. Yeah. I would just emphasize that we either can 
um, just resigned to be complainants mm. every day to complain what is not working yes. or to agree to join forums mm. a political forum which mm. is a political party yeah. and make it your business yes. to question mm. and to shape mm. governance yeah. in this country I agree yeah. let me see what this has now let it be fun Wow, what are the most ideal politics of the future in mm. Kenya for you? What are your hopes and dreams for Kenyan politics as politicians and politically active people? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So politics of the future and your... Oh. I think the politics of the future, and I close my eyes when I do these things because I have to feed into <laughs> that spirit. Yeah, you have to see the you future. Exactly, you have to yes. bring it home. Um, ah, the politics of the future is very female-led, uh, is very gender neutral, is not classist, um, is deeply, deeply pro-people, is, is pro-poor, is pro-vulnerable, is pro-marginalized. It's politics that exists in the marginalized spaces you know it exists far away from the center because now we operate here it's like do you know this person and then they know this person and the, but the policy of the future has to be like you have to know the furthest person the person who can't benefit from us being here mm -hmm. you know and then how we bring them to the center um I think also it sounds like the politics of the future is very utopian, but it's not mm -hmm. because when you've had such a bad run for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, not just as a woman, but also just as a human being who's seen as a lesser human, mm -hmm. you know, um, anything that you aspire to that releases you from all the chains now of, of sexism and misogyny and patriarchy and all of this sounds utopian mm -hmm. you know because the people who also hold the misogyny the patriarchy the capitalism are, are just making it sure that everyone is stuck here now and can't imagine everything else so the politics of the future has to be reimaginative um, and it has to free us from thinking that because things have been a certain way for a very really long time, they can't change and they shouldn't change, you know? Um, and I think like for like a practical example, reimagination now has to bring in context because I think many times when we talk about reimagination, we don't give examples or exemplars that we can look up to. We are just like, mm, it's good and nice, right? But like a practical example, I want to see a woman run for president like you and have another female as deputy as daring as as crazy as that is because men have done it easily mm -hmm, they'll mm -hmm. just say excuse me friend i'm running for this thing do you want to come through and then the friend says i'm here you know mm -hmm. like that thing of seeing that women can actually occupy the highest offices of power and they mm -hmm. can be there all of them mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean that we are saying men don't are not valued it doesn't mean we are saying men don't matter it doesn't mean we are saying all of these things it just means that women can actually lead mm -hmm. at highest levels mm -hmm. so the idea of women, of women deputizing people should now no longer exist and that's the level of reimagination i come from right um and seeing an active role for queer people in politics who can fund politics who can be active participants beyond just their voters mm -hmm. They can give you money for campaigns, but they can vie for a thing, mm -hmm. you know, like imagining how everybody would participate if we saw each and every one of us as part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing. I don't know what you're imagining. No, for I, I, the future of uh, politics is female and you can see them from the horizon around the world. Yes. You can even see it in Kenya because more women are participating than ever before. Mm. But this is a call mm. for women to really participate yes. in numbers that are representative of the demographics exactly. because we are more than half the population. We are. So for any post that comes, we want women showing up. Yes. But we also want to see um, the future for me should be better governance, mm. more aware citizens, mm. more engaged, and a citizenry that holds leaders to account. Yeah. When we have an engaged citizenry that is holding leaders to account, mm. you will find resignations when people do outrageous things yeah. because it will be demanded of them by the voter. Absolutely. Now, 
the elected people can literally walk on the voters and nothing happens. Mm. So I'm looking at that and seeing that the future also has to be of young women, young mothers, because mothers are more than nurturers. The fathers are coming into it. Mm. But we want to see more mothers mm. teaching their children or nurturing them yeah. to respect each other irrespective of gender. Yeah. Where the misogyny and patriarchy is uprooted at the home level. I love it. Even before you come to school. Yeah. Where school reinforces those good values taught at home. Mm. So a society mm. that respects the humanity of each individual right from the home, mm. even as we demand of it outside the gates yeah. of our houses. Yeah. So I want to see a more engaged society. Mm. And it is political parties and activists, unengaged citizens who are going to do it. Yeah. And therefore, what is your role, my role, yes. in the future we want to see? Exactly. That is the greatest question. I agree. The future won't come to us the future we want to see without our input. Mm. What it is you and me are going to do today, yeah. which will give us that future we want, yeah. that outcome we want. Yeah. And let's go to work. I agree. I as agree. women, as citizens, and especially the young women. I agree. But I'm saying as an elder in society, because once you hit 60, you're with the elders. Politically, I say I'm very young. I say I'm 63 young. Mm. But we are there, energetic, ready to join hands with you. But I'm very proud that it is to a generation of engaged citizens like yourself. Bright, young, engaged citizens, female and male, that we are going to hand over to. I love it. Yes. I love it. Mm. I think also something you've said which is lovely is when you uproot patriarchy at the home level mm -hmm. is it's because that's where it all starts, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and cascading that and thinking around how do we have leadership or governance or political mm -hmm. engagements that are based on care mm -hmm. as an actual um, as an actual idea, as an actual pra practice, you know, yeah. because one of the things we've seen now with COVID and, and I think COVID just brought it out, it's been there forever, yeah. is that we have systems that don't really care, you know? Um, and we only get to care when we realize it's, it's, about, it's about to get to us, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what would leadership be like? So that's the leadership of the future. How, how do we make it to a place where um, the structures that hold people to accountable, those to account those who are in leadership and those who are um, led by the leaders, to all share a cohesive uh, way of thinking and way of engaging and way of being that doesn't see anyone as other, you know? That doesn't see anyone as, um, there's something you lack so you can't be here. Yeah. You know, you don't speak like us, you can't be here. You, know, you don't have names like us, you can't yeah. be here. You don't travel like us, you can't be here, you know? You don't look cute like us here, you can't be mm -hmm. here. That thing of having actual care within systemic political and governance structures, mm -hmm. so that we don't wake up one day when it's the middle of a pandemic and we say, oh, wow, I guess the people who clean our houses are essential workers, yeah. you know? But we've always known that they are essential, mm -hmm. you know? So that's like a, a governance that already humanizes people, despite class, despite identity, despite religion, despite marital status, despite education, that kind of leadership would be phenomenal for the future. That comes with an engaged citizen. Yeah. Who hold leaders to account and therefore force them mm to put their interests first. Mm. So over to us, mm. me and you and society in general. To challenge it. To challenge it and to lay the foundation for that future that mm. we want, yeah. Love it. Mm. Is it my turn? It oh my is. God. I, I hope this is a fun question. <laughs> they all feel deep. I've seen political capital. Um, hmm. How can women in Kenya 
develop and increase their political capital as a demographic of voters and beyond the vote in their role as political decision makers? And then how can we encourage the participation of younger women especially? I feel like parts of it you've answered in the other question, but if there's anything left mm -hmm. that you feel we need to talk about as regards women doing more as political capital, because we are political capital. Yeah, right? and we also have political capital yes. because just like in business, yeah. the work one has done, the work one is doing mm. is your political capital because yeah. that's what gives you your voice credibility mm. in national affairs. Agree. And uh, the way you carry yourself around, the way you po uh, portray yourself and the way you tackle issues mm. is what makes people identify or not identify with you. Yeah. yeah. And that is our political capital. Yeah. As for women and younger women participating, we can't say we have enough. Mm. We have to keep encouraging one another. Mm. And one of the disappointments that I've, um, I've seen lately mm. is women who have come in through the affirmative action um, space, mm -hmm. getting co-opted by the patriarchy oh, wow. to do things that actually relegate women to the secondary role. Yeah. That takes away the gain, yes. trivializes women's participation, mm. and lays a basis for scrapping of women's positions and affirmative action altogether mm. because it will look irrelevant. Yes. So to every woman of whatever age and to every one young woman coming in, remember that we want to increase numbers. Yes. Remember, therefore, you have a heavy responsibility to do the best you can mm. to hold the hands of more women yeah. and help them to come on board. Yes. You are an ambassador of women. So however you conduct yourself, if you do not, do, if you do not perform, you are working against women. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that consciousness that you are a space holder for women mm. is what we need to see yeah. and what is being eroded by the increased numbers. I remember days when we were like six in parliament and we had this thing of working together even though we didn't come from the same political parties. Mm. Now you are seeing women throwing words at each other. Mm. There has to be a code, mm. a sisterhood, an unspoken agreement that yes, we may not be in the same space, but we have to have a common cause of working towards opening doors for more women yeah. and increasing the numbers. Yeah. That way, we'll encourage more women to come in. Mm. We also have to rally ar around women who are unfairly treated, women of whatever persuasion. Yes. And I was very disappointed when a young civic leader in Nairobi was battered at City Hall. Mm the time they had problems with the speaker, former speaker. Mm. And she was brutalized. And yes, a few women came, uh, voiced their concerns, mm. but I did not see, I expected to see a match of women. Yeah. We are dropping the ball as women. That mm. is not the way to increase numbers. Yep. This is a call to us as women. We must rally together and we must uh, protect each other and stand for each other's right to be in the space they are in. I agree. Yeah. Oh my God, you've said many fantastical things. When you've said we have to, we have to come rallying for other women, and, yes. and the famous quote of, or the famous phrase of, uh, "You stand as one, uh, yeah. but speak for ten thousand or something." Yeah. But then I've always said where we are now this is the generation that already comes as 10,000 yeah. and speaks for tens of thousands mm -hmm. in ways to multiply diversify mm -hmm. um, show that it is not just my voice it is the voice of many other women that you're not allowing in this space mm -hmm. um, and then when you talk about um, a, um, a woman being battered I remember one of the cases I ever dealt with because people used to send me cases on Twitter yeah. um, was a woman, an elected MCA, I can't even say her name, yeah. who reached out to me yeah. because the police couldn't protect her yeah. and she belonged to a particular party. Thank God it's not any of us's party. 
<laughs> and I'm saying that yeah. also knowing that it's a terrible thing, you yeah. know, because it shouldn't happen anywhere. Yeah. But the male um, uh, party members were against her because she didn't want the money that was um, allocated to the women caucus yeah. to go to the women caucus. They wanted the money, the funds diverted, and she refused. Mm. You know, and she was pushed, and she hit her head on a table. She lost consciousness, and she woke up when she was outside of the office, not even in the office, and she was bleeding, and she couldn't move. I think her left side or her right side for like I think two months. Oh my goodness. So she reached out to me on Twitter mm. because the police couldn't secure her. Yeah. Um, the the lawyers she thought could get to. In, in, in any legal way protect her. We're not doing that and told her, oh, fix this in the party. Maybe umekwa kierehere, something oh, happened wow. to you, right? Mm -hmm. So you're very right in saying that there's ways in which we are not rallying around our own. Yeah. Because men rally around their own mm -hmm. and their own are not fantastic. They're not great. They're not measurable to the standards that we are supposed to measure just ethical citizens, mm. right? But they rally around those. Mm. So we are not doing that enough. Mm. And we need to question why we are not doing that enough or yeah. what are the things that are keeping us from not doing that enough, yeah. you know? And I agree on the sisterhood and figuring out how do we build political sisterhoods, mm. like a coven, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. A co political coven, a social coven, an mm -hmm. economical coven, because also we understand the repercussions of women joining politics, yeah. that the cost is high you know yeah. and and the backlash like you were saying is higher mm. like the things i would mention that have cost me that have been, that i've had to give up because i speak truth to power are so mm. many yeah. you know yeah. but it's because i have this team around me that makes sure mm. i'll wake up in the morning i'll skip to doing this mm. i will cry myself to sleep it doesn't matter but they'll be like you wake up in the morning this yeah. is the process yeah you will still expand this space and you mm. expand it actively, mm. you know. So even women who have spaces, who hold spaces in media, in print and in television, mm. um, in political parties, um, in civil society, in NGOs, in the private sector, what are they doing to bring other women, you know? Because we can't keep relying on the fact that women have to qualify to do these things. Yeah. Well, men only have to just have audacity, yeah. you know? Women have already shown that we can do these things, right? And they are qualified. They are very qualified. In large numbers. You know? Yeah. And then how do we make sure that the spaces they're coming to inhabit now don't have to deal with the consequences that we dealt with? So like the things yeah. I've dealt yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. the misogyny, the patriarchy, or like the, um, the level of patriarchy I'm dealing with now, I don't want that to happen to a 24-year-old, a 25-year-old, a 28-year-old who wants to get into politics because it means exactly. Shefa has done nothing. Exactly. You know, Shefa has just been here, yeah. just occupying this space for nothing. You know, I have to change and I have to make it an active sacrifice for myself. So I really, really love what you said. Um, I think another thing for women just joining the space and the last question, which I forget, but I know, yeah. younger women, encouraging younger women's participation especially is, it's just saying the most boring, trite thing is that nobody speaks for you than you speak for yourself. Yeah. You know, nobody can speak better for you. You have to be present. You have to engage. Um, and that w the people like us now who are holding this space, and I, I, I repeat again, thank you for holding this space in humanity. Thank you truly. Um, because it now challenges me to do better than what yeah. you've done. Yeah. You know, and to figure out listen, I'm not going to do this and waste it while well, mother has <laughs> killed all the dragons <laughs> for me to be here, yeah. only for me to let other dragons. Oh, I also have another fun question. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you another fun question? Oh, I'll ask you another fun question. Okay. It will be so fun. In your view, are the realities of tribalism and ethnicized politics the same for women as they are for men? Mm -hmm. Is it possible for women as a political demographic mm -hmm. to engage with these challenges in a different way? Hmm. Mm. Wow. I can take it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tribe, tribe manifests differently for women. Mm -hmm. um, even just from the basis of the fact that... Um, <laughs> and it's a funny conversation because I had it with a friend, a very dear friend, mm -hmm. and we were talking about, do women actually have languages? Yeah. Because when you're born, you have your father's name, which is a male name, mm -hmm. and then you speak your mother tongue, which yeah. of course your mother tongue is the tongue your mother inherited from their father. Yeah. So then, do women actually have <laughs> tribes? You see what I mean? Yeah. Like, do we have an actual anchoring when it comes to um, the things we own tribally? Because we don't have names that belong to us. Mm -hmm. 
um, we don't have tongues that are ours. We might teach tongues to our children, to our nieces, to our nephews, but they're not ours, mm. right? Um, and then of course, if you're married, um, then now you belong to a certain community. Mm. So say for example, me who comes from several tribes, if I'm to be married to a Kalenjin, mm. then I would belong to a Kalenjin community. If I was to vie politically, I would vie as now a Kalenjin woman because that's now the new identity. Yeah. And how that plays around from where I have come from within my many tribes is a problem. So I think tri tribe cuts women deeper than it cuts men because men wield tribal power. Mm. Women have to abide by it. So yeah, so men will tribal power differently and women have to abide by it. And that, that is the consequence. And, and, and for women, it's more, the consequences are more dire, they are more expansive. And that it takes from you doing the actual work you want to do politically to now start explaining your political al alignments, uh, political relations, political uh, infusions that have happened within life, right? Um, and I remember the first thing that happened to me when I said, okay, I'm going to be the vice chair of this political party was everyone started questioning and and my my team sent me a google they, they would send me google screenshots every time that people are googling okore is this a luya or luo name you know mm -hmm. and then because my first name is very deutsch um very german very old white man so they're like is she married to a luya man who moved to luo land <laughs> because they were trying to find where to anchor me where to Right? locate you exactly mm -hmm. so that they could relate to my politics yeah. so for women you become much more relatable if people can figure out the root of what your name is yeah. your 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 accent comes from yeah. um the way you engage things yeah. like that but for men it's just like i can exist as jameson smith yeah and i can be the deepest busia man and nobody will bother right yeah i don't know what the experience has been like for you I think what I've noticed first and foremost is that women in politics engage with tribe mm. almost the same as men. Mm. Because you will hear someone saying, oh, this, is, this one is from this tribe, you know. Yet at the social level, mm. we engage with the tribe differently. I agree. Women marry outside yeah. of their tribe. Mm. And you will find so many women married across the, the ethnic yes. divide. Yeah. So that even during the post-election violence in 2007, mm. there were ID camps that could not take whole families. Oh, wow. Because if now mm. people are pitted as tribe, this man has been evicted or this woman has been evicted because they're having family that is not the desired mm. tribe. So there was even that problem. So for a woman, we have to consciously refuse to engage like the men do with mm. the tribal question. Mm. Tribe does not matter to us mm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. You see? Our associations go beyond tribes. Yeah. Actually, women are the ambassadors that cement mm. the tribe. Mm. Because when you marry in a different ethnic group, you're bringing those groups closer. Exactly. And over the years, we intermarried with our neighbors, the Kikuyus, the Maasai, mm. the Kambas. Yeah. Whoever is your neighbor, you will find that you have interacted yeah. and, uh, to, and even influence each other's language. Yeah. So as women, I think we ought to consciously refuse to engage with negative and ethnicity the way men do mm. and to take our diversity mm. as our strength because it's indeed our strength mm. as families yeah and uh, it's something we have to consciously do we are the majority and if we do that we will influence politics i agree men use tribe and especially the male leaders and it's happening right now they use tribe to galvanize their support mm. we must do that differently yes and we must refuse to be galvanized on the basis of ethnicity yeah. and only be galvanized on the basis of issues. Mm. Tribe doesn't matter in our daily lives. Yeah. When you're putting food on the table, you will never remember which tribe you are. Yes. You will only be worried about whether you have money or a job to assist you to get the money you need, yeah. your daily bread. Yes. 
These are the realities of life. Yeah. So let us refuse to use tribe as a weapon to divide us. Agreed. It should be a bridge. Mm. Our diversity should be our strength. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the message we have to start saying mm. consciously. Yeah. Yeah. Because women have been transcending tribe for a long time. Yeah. You know, like when you said when you put food on the table, you're not saying, these are anguashes from <laughs> Kinuthia or from Otieno yeah. or yeah. from Kipruto or, from, you know, it's like, it's ngwashe, it's ngwashe, people yeah. need to eat. So I agree, women have been transcending tribe forever. And then I think there's ways in which we can rally yeah. um, around our issues and for our issues mm -hmm. um, above and beyond the the toxicity of what tribe is, is, mm -hmm. is made to be. Yeah. Um, and that I, I also love the fact that we are tribal in terms of diversity. Like it's yeah. it's lovely to be in a country where people speak diverse languages. And that over forty. Right? Yes. Like we are not the country where we'll all just speak one language. Yes. So, so ways in which that can be used for us and not against us would be fantastic. And the beauty of our many cultures and right? traditions. Right. Yet we have so much in common as it, human beings. It's so glorious. Yes. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I think we need to refuse what you're saying, the bastardization of tribe as well, the same way we ref need to refuse the bastardization of politics. Of politics. Um, interesting questions. I have two more questions. Um, yeah. One is, which music or musics or artists do you listen to when you want to feel powerful? Um, and then number two, it will be, what do you want people to say when all is said and done? And when all is said and done, depends <laughs> on you about Martha. Yeah. You know? Music, <laughs> let me first say this. Good, danceable music is my music. I accept. Ah. It doesn't matter from where. Yeah. But different occasions evoke different music. True story. You know? Yeah. And I always remember... Um, I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Mm. I want to let it show. Mm. That's a power song because yes. if you have a message, mm. you have a purpose, yes. then you want to announce the, to the world. Yes. You are coming out. I don't know what... <laughs> I really <laughs> the love singer it so who, <laughs> who sang it thought about when she sang, I'm coming out. I but want the world to know. I, you got to let it's it show. True. I love it. So I think about that. So when it is about defending our position, defending good governance, yes. fighting corruption, yes. defending the constitution, then I think about Giuliani's song. Sita si mama maovu ya kitawala. That's the sort of music that will come to my head. Yes. And there are many, many other you know, songs that come to me yeah. different times. Yeah. If I'm celebrating, um, I might think like when I was doing my birthday bash here mm -hmm. for the 60th, mm -hmm. you know, celebrate good times, yeah. you know. So music that is celebratory will mm -hmm. come to me. Yeah. So types of music, it will be religious, it, will be, it may be secular, it may be non-secular, mm. but all music is food for my soul. I love it. Yeah. Oh. And my campaigns normally are full of song and dance. Mm. Yeah. As they should be. Song and dance. As they should and be. And I love dancing. Yeah. I don't know what music comes to your mind. Oh my God, I'm the mm. worst to ask about music because I'm so eclectic. Uh, mm. So because I wage war differently. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and sometimes I'm in a deep space and, and doing things with my spirit and I just need to anchor myself. Mm. So then I have a, such an old soul and I think it's because of also how I was raised. I will yeah. go very deep and very old and I will listen to Nina Simone, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and I'll listen to, what's her song? I think it's the Four Women. Uh, because the different four women and they talk about different ways in which they're challenging systems and challenging yeah. um, conditionings of society and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there are times when I'm just feeling like, it's okay to come up and not fight. You know, we can dance and be yeah, happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those are days when I would listen to someone like Fena and mm. I would listen to someone like Mudoni Drama Queen, who is a friend. I adore her to death. And mm. also she just has a way of consciousness, you yeah. know, of making you dance to a thing that you've, it makes you feel guilty of your role. Like you're dancing, yeah. but you're also questioning, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a good thing. 
Um, and then there are moments when you want to listen to someone like Miriam Makeba, you know, mm -hmm. because you want to understand how we keep the struggle going. Mm -hmm. And you want to understand what is the bigger role and what is the bigger purpose, you know. Um, and then there's sometimes you just don't even want to listen to people actually speaking in a, in a song and you just want to listen to the beats and no lyrics. Yeah. Um, and then you can go as broad as you want. So I have, I have many, many artists that I adore. Of course, mm -hmm. we listen to Beyonce because we all want to be running the world clearly we are yeah, yeah. Um, and that we want to be fearless <laughs> no I think send me something any good music I told you will be food for my soul I really will you see? I really will and anything danceable yeah you'll catch me dancing I really will yes. I really I promise yeah um, so our last question was what do you want people to say about Martha when it's all said and done and I'll answer that as myself as well like what do I want people That's to say when it's all said one and done? she lived her life to the fullest yeah and she changed mm. the world. I love it. it. It doesn't have to be the entire universe. The yes. world around me is the world, mm. you see? And I look back and I say I'm blessed yeah. because I've lived to see some of the things we have fought for come mm. to be. Mm. It's only that there's so much more to do. Yes. That remains undone. Yes. But I'm happy because looking back, I can see you. I can see a line of others coming and I know <laughs> that the world is in good hands. Thank you. Our responsibility is to do the best we can, mm. the best way we know how. Yeah. The rest, over to you. Oh. Yeah. I like this baton you're passing and then I'm just like, pressure. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think what I want people to say when it's all said and done is that she knew no fear. Mm. She didn't live in fear. Fear of speaking, fear, fear of engaging fear of representation, fear of being herself, that I did know fear. Yeah. Um, I think it's because it's who I am yeah. and how I was raised. And I come from like a whole ancestry of women who've always been like, what do you mean we can't do that? Mm -hmm. What do you mean we can't say that? Right? So I've been like this. I've been the person who's always wondering why and, and why not. Right? To that extent, we are related. Yeah. Yes. I love it. So yes, <laughs> I want people to say she knew no fear. Yeah. Cool. This is so nice. You're so amazing. <laughs> is it over? Yes. Okay. Thank you guys. Welcome next year. We'll have videos on Thursdays. <laughs> At 9 p.m. Because <laughs> we so need wonderful. to have it. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is great. You're so Thank wonderful. You. Thank you, my You're dear. You're so wonderful. You. Like, there are not enough it's women you. like you. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you know me? I just came to find your flames. And no. then you were there if finding my flames. If we see people like you behind this us, woman. we'd be worried, isn't it? What makes it okay is that we can see all around us. And Twitter is great because even when we don't meet, we sight each other. Mm. Yeah? And Always there's something that somebody says and it triggers something else in your mind. Yeah. You see? Yeah. And I've gotten to know people on Twitter, including people in diaspora you do, you ha I haven't met. Yeah. And you resonate and you start checking on the things they say. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you don't listen to Cardi B, Martha, if you don't listen to Cardi B, surely, <laughs> how do we convert you? Uh, because you should. Because I've gone local. Oh, my God. <laughs>